Hey guys, welcome to Wildcat Man Out. Alright guys, it's been a while since we've been out, so it's well overdue. Hopefully you enjoy the video. Today we came out in the canoes we have and we brought with us a selection of army surplus gear uh, just to show that army surplus is very very viable uh, to use for bushcraft or wild camping and more importantly it's very very viable and quite good actually in the winter time. Yeah so today we're going to discuss two kind of different setups one being a more budget start it out if you will start out kit and the second one being a slightly more expensive more luxurious but both having very very capable capabilities in the winter time in one of our first videos we discussed budget bushcraft you probably noticed quite a lot of the budget bushcraft involved army surplus it is it's a very very cost effective way to get quality gear for a reasonable price so what we have now, as you can see, we've laid out some things and Sam's going to talk through what he's brought uh, and I'll talk through what I've brought and we'll discuss some pros and cons of army surplus and how we use it. So, for my side of the things, you're going to see a lot of similarities between this and the budget bushcraft video we did earlier on. And the reason for that is because I'm going to be displaying the budget side of the army surplus stuff, mainly because it's all the stuff I bought and I haven't really moved on massively from it in terms of army surplus so we'll dive straight in first of all my backpack it's a British Army Bergen um, I picked up at a second hand market for £20 these come with rocket pouches which make them a great bag because for the summertime you can shrink it down make it smaller winter time bang on your side pouches and you have another 30 litres in total I believe I think they're 15 litres each side so it makes it a great backpack for that there and for wear and tear wise these things they stand the test of time test of time they're super durable, super cheap. So that's for backpack for me. For sleeping then, I use the British Army uh, sleeping bag, the winter sleeping bag, the bounce and bomb as it's referred as. Now I have it compressed down in the meantime. They are quite a big bag, so they are, but these sell for around 20 to 40 pounds. Depends on the quality, so yeah. it is, yeah. Like, obviously with all surplus, you can get some lemons, but for the most part, you know, high quality gear is still cheap. These bags, they're heavy, Yeah. but that'll be a recurring theme. Spoiler, <laughs> a recurring theme Wet. for bushcraft gear that is based on armature plus. But these bags here are absolutely brilliant. What I really like about them as well is the front loading zip. Um, yeah. For me personally, it makes it super handy to get into. They've got pockets on the inside too for keeping some things in. I think the idea behind them is to dry, keep some gear in, dry some gear off too if you're wet. But brilliant bags, um, super cheap, super warm. The downside is, once again, is the size and weight, but they're rated to minus 15 degrees Celsius and, you know, uh, similar bags for that kind of rating, you're looking at lots of money CRs, but of course, the trade off's weight. And so that, that's still my go-to winter bag. Yes. I, 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 can't, I don't want to spend the money to buy a good bag, whereas, because if this gets wrecked, it's 20 to 40 pounds down the drain, it's not a lot of money, and it's, it's has stood me well for three or four years now, no complaints with it, keeps me warm, keeps me toasty. Every winter. I have the same bag. I'm not bringing it out, it's the same bag. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, this, um, it's, I use this as my food bag in the winter time so I don't have to put on the pouches because I personally don't like using them. But this is a British Army resp respirator bag. Um, six pound, six yeah. pound we got these for. Cheap. Um, yeah, cheap as chips. We use them, you've seen them in the video before. Yeah. We, we have them, a couple of them to do. And they're great wee bags for day trips or for, as Sam yeah. said, adding on. A nice wee haversack, even if you're going away for, as Mark says, for a day, you just want to take some snacks with you or notebook and pen or whatever. Keep some extra gear in. I use it for my food bag mainly, so I keep all my food in it, all my, my cooking, my, my utensils, knives, forks, spoons, plate, chopping board, spices, all goes in there. And if I've got room in my bag, go on the top. If not, I can carry as a haversack. So, Sam's shelter. This is behind us. Do you know you can see it? Uh, it's a basically a British Army 
we call it a basha, but it's a tarp. Uh, heavy duty tarp, has lots of tie-out points, lots of webbing points on it. Uh, this one here is one of actually our first ones, it's in, as you can see, Desert Camel. That makes it cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Desert Camel being less wanted, makes it cheaper and it's also the most recent colour codes of use, you know, that war, so plenty of about and cheapest ships, £10. Yeah, also I forgot, my British Army baby bag is because it was lying down there, I forgot about it. But yeah, the British Army baby bag, especially when you're pairing up with uh, the Basha or Tarp and the sleeping bag, it's a must because for the, they're heavy, once again, that re encouraged spoiler, they're heavy, but they're extremely durable, they're really, really waterproof, they're really, really big as well, so you can get your air mattress in there or your foam pad and the sleeping bag, and you can keep everything covered up at night time, so even if there's a bit of direct rain coming in at either end of your tarp, the hood on it is phenomenally big. Pull that hood over, boom, dry as a bone. Windproof, waterproof, yeah. what you want, breathable, breathable. Um, I think whenever I bought this one, um, they were going for around £20 for a grade A, but I think as time went on, I think if you are to buy a grade A one now, you're probably looking at £35 to £40, but still, personally, if I was to go and buy another baby bag, that's what I would buy, personally. So, on my side, it's you've probably noticed, so recently I use quite a lot of Swedish backpacks and cooking equipment and stuff, and of course I've got my trusty Lavu, <laughs> my Polish Lavu. This one's modified, as you can see, it's the stove jack and the skirt, but you know, you can buy the normal size one as well. They're becoming a bit hard to find, but as far as a versatile shelter goes, for all seasons, uh, it's hard to beat, so it is. So today, I have with me, this is a bit of a luxury store, this is, it's not everyday common gear, this is an LK70 Swedish backpack, they're rare and uh, especially one being canvas in this kind of condition, but they're absolutely massive as you can see, it's an absolute massive bag, I have in there my British Army bouncing bomb, my camp cot, my cook setups, water, food, you name it, everything, but this is a bit of a luxury, I just brought it because I like to show it and I like using it. I don't get to use it as often. You probably notice using LK7 LK35 quite a lot, but this is a go-to bag. I pair that with the Lavu and the British Army Bouncing Bomb. I ha we have moved away from foam pads, Army Surplus foam pads, very, very good, decent R value, and relatively comfortable for what they are, but they don't compare to modern air mats and it's just a luxury thing, it's just a comfort thing. You're right here, enjoy yourself. I don't have to prove it, you know what I mean? It's just about enjoying ourselves. So we use air mats to do, which we'll not show you obviously because everyone has a choice in air mats. <laughs> uh, with that, some our gear, plastic water bottles. This is a, a Dutch one, but you know, they're all bomb proof, super, super sturdy and very, very strong, good use to they are. Again, you can't use them over the fire, etc. So they've got limitations, but cheapest chips, a couple of pounds. You can buy them, cheap them. Uh, you probably know this here as well, so the Swedish Army mess set. This is a aluminium version, so it is. So again, not the lightest, but as far as versatility goes, you won't beat this, you won't. And these are still, if you can get them, relatively cheap. They're not too dear, so they're not. But it's great, you can throw them over open fire, you can cook in the fire, you can cook over the, the actual stove itself, you name it. You can bake in it, you can fry in it, you whatever you want. And then there's also a little thing, I, I still take these things, this is a, a wash bag or a, a water, a wash container from the army. I still carry it, it's great for putting water in, carrying water, washing dishes, whatever you name it. And of course, cutlery etc, this is all army, this is actually Swedish army so it is, uh, things. So, as we mentioned very briefly, the biggest draw to army surplus is the cost. The biggest downside being the weight. Everything being robust, heavyweight, heavy gauge couture, good cordura, canvas, webbing, strapping, you name it, it all adds weight. Like you won't be comparable to modern technology. But having said that there, the weight trade-off is quality. It's great quality gear for the most part. There's obviously some lemons out there. Great quality gear, very, very robust. I mean you're out lying in a field or lying in the forest with sticks in the ground and stuff. In my opinion, I'm happy to carry about extra weight, so I'm not out hiking for three days in a row. Our hiking setup, which we'll show you in the future, so is totally different. There's, n well, actually, I still carry an LK35. <laughs> I still have my, my mine's are totally different. <laughs> I still carry an LK35, but most of my supporting setup is totally different. Cook setup, sleeping, you name it, everything's different. Even clothing's different. We didn't mention Sam's wearing yeah. army surplus boots. Army surplus coat. <laughs> like, see, for, 
for the winter time, as always, there's that way. For boots as well, like personally, I find the army surplus boots. I really like these. They have a really high ankle, which for me, I have I've I chocolate ankles, so. I have the same boots as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, for the winter time, um, in the summertime, I, I do have different boots, but in the winter time, these boots are they're leather. If you if you kind of look after them a little bit, for. I don't know how much these are in the market now. Uh, I'm not even going to estimate a guess, but I think you'll probably they're get not, them for They're not cheap, they're not, they're not cheap. They're, but as far as boots go, they're not bad. Yeah, I bought these new, like a new pair, but you can buy second-hand ones, yeah. which I, you will get for in around 30 to 50 pounds. Yeah. And for that price range, they're, 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 they're you, can't, you can't beat it, personally. This coat is the Swedish M40 Parka. Yeah. And I'll tell you what. <laughs> You can sleep on it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's only good for the winter time. Like if it's kind of if there's a bit of heat about at all, yeah. don't 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 wear it. But like as I say, as you talk about robustness, like this thing here, I've had this three years. It does. <laughs> if I if I rub against a tree, if I if I roll over and like, whatever, it's, it's not going to get damaged. Whereas some of the more modern technical coats, you brush yeah. past a tree, it rips. It's, that's it. There's two three hundred pounds on the drain. This was thirty. Quid? I think between 20 and 30 pounds. 20, 30 they're hard pounds. to get now. Unfortunately, yeah. the problem with surplus is when people start to get the nice stuff or the rare stuff, the market floods and it gets bought up. So we're showing you things now. The British Army stuff is pretty readily available, yeah. but it's the less the desire stuff. Any of the British Army stuff you'll get on any eBay auction or any multi mart, any of them places, pretty much day and daily. See the, the Polish Lavu, the Swedish stuff, even the M40s. When they are in the sale, on sale, if they're on sale, uh, they're a bit pricier now. So they are. So, to be honest, these as I say, we call this here the luxury. This is we would be lying in a camp cot in a, a minus fifteen sleeping bag with a stove. <laughs> that, that's like we're in the canoe. Weight doesn't matter. Uh, that's pure luxury. Whereas Sam's on the ground in a bivvy, yeah, in a bivvy in a tarp with open ends. So we're showing both will give you a good night's sleep. You'll sleep all night through and heat. You'll not get cold. But you know. Spend slightly more money, you'll get a slightly better setup. But as always, to, to starting out, this this setup I'm showing you right now is a setup I go was my go-to setup every camping trip for well over a year. Yeah. I bought some smaller things that were really inexpensive because I I didn't have a load of spare cash and I didn't want to be pumping a load of spare cash into newer gear which had the chance of getting damaged more and stuff. So now we're into a lot more. We do a lot more. I'm happy to spend that little bit more money on a bit better stuff, which I do have and I do use, but for my, my go-to stuff for winter time, I'm still going to bring this here, most likely, but bar, yeah. bar the tarp. I have a lavvy, I have my own lavvy because yeah. it, you can't beat it, yeah. you know. Yeah. But like, if I'm out bushcrafting or wild camping in a forest area, I don't have my tents with me. I don't bring tents, I have tarps, I have hammocks, I have Polish lavvies. It's just the way, what I enjoy. Everyone's slightly different, so take this at what you will, we're just trying to show that army surplus is still very viable and there's lots of bushcraft companies out there selling very quality high quality stuff but uh you pay a lot of money for it and whether or not it's any better is up for you to decide but uh i'm i'm sure happy with especially when i'm in the winter time with my surplus yeah. it served me well and we just thought we'd show you some nice things so i hope you enjoyed the only thing I wouldn't recommend you buy surplus is mess tins. No matter what anyone says, Aye. mess tins are trash. Aye. British Army mess tins, that is. Yeah, British Army mess tins. <laughs> just... No matter what PJ says, <laughs> <Babe>. <laughs> they're rubbish. <laughs> Alright, that's that's my honest opinion and it's, it's almost a fact. Yeah, I have them at home, I don't even bring them out. Yeah. I, I like to get all my gear out and use it. I don't, they, don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't feel like that, eh? No, buy, buy, buy something else. Buy the Swedish one. I don't or... buy any of them Esbit stoves either. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoy this. Hopefully yeah. you got some good insight out of it as well. Um, so, yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. It's something, again, slightly different. We're just trying new things. We are. But if you like these kind of gear overviews, uh, not quite a review to say. There's plenty of people who do reviews online. Uh, gear overviews and how we think things work and stuff. Let us know in the comments because we don't mind showing what we have. We we spend a lot of time picking our gear so hopefully you enjoy it too yeah guys as always massive thank you for tuning in i appreciate it and if, please if you if you like the content like the video and subscribe see you next time cheers guys thanks